Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today, of course, as you can see from what's beside me, the details for the Luna Snow update have been released. Now, as of the drop of this video, if you're watching right at 9:30 a.m. Eastern Time, it's about 12 and a half hours until 10 p.m. Eastern Time or 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for when the update drops or when the maintenance goes live and the game will be down. And then five hours after that, the game will be live again and you will be able to unlock and play with Luna Snow and you'll get the 500 crystals and the 10 biometrics for her. But that's where it's going to stop for a lot of the players. Unfortunately and for whatever reason, Luna Snow is a bio subscription character. So in order to get her bios, if you are new to the game after she's released or if you decide to pick this game up later and you don't select Luna Snow as one of your three free bio subscription days, you're going to have to go into the mission shop. You're going to have to buy the Get 20 Biometrics Daily. So this is what we call kind of a paywall character in the game. Now, of course, everyone who's playing right now will get 10 biometrics for free, so they'll be able to get her at one star and then they'll be able to rank her up to six stars using rank up tickets because that's all available. But then you can't get bios for Luna Snow unless they do an event battle in the future or they do some sort of other giveaway, which they have never done for the likes of Carnage, Hyperion, Ironheart, and several other paywall-only characters, Spider-Man 2099, Agent Venom, and others, Kid Kaiju. So it's a little bit perplexing, but a lot of people, I guess, are going to end up with a Tier 1 15 gear Luna Snow and then people who buy the bio subscription will be able to tier 2 her by maxing out her gears or they can actually even use a mega tier 2 ticket if they really want to. That is the bad news for the character. I don't understand why Netmarble would make her a paywall character and we'll get into that discussion a little bit later but I want to discuss the details of her character so you actually know what you can expect from her and whether she's going to be kind of meta shifting or meta defining at all in this game if she's going to have a big impact and then I'll get into the other impact which is a total lack of other features in this update and the update being solely about a singular character so Luna Snow is a speed type character it's not mentioned here but she's going to be speed so immediately uh, the comparisons between her and Quicksilver will be made of course she's a superhero so we don't have to put her in the villain category her leadership appears to apply to herself. So the way that I can think about her leadership, yes, the all speed is fine, but the more important part is the chance to become immune to cold damage. Right now, there's only two characters or three characters that do respectable cold damage that you even have to think about. Crystal, Loki, and Misty Knight. You don't really have to think about Misty Knight, so it's down to just Crystal and Loki. Crystal is situational at best, so it's really just Loki or also Luna Snow. And that's what I think is kind of misleading or maybe perhaps telling about her leadership. If Luna Snow becomes a pivotal member and a pivotal part of the meta that's coming up in the game, and if she is up there with Quicksilver and Jean Grey and all these other extremely strong characters, you're gonna need a Luna Snow potentially on your team to give you that immune to cold damage to protect yourself from enemy Luna Snows. Uh, hopefully they're not doing that and that's not the case, but it is definitely a possibility, but it's it's kind of cool I guess she counters herself her tier 1 passive is also pretty cool I have to say that the way they designed it uh, is kind of like a mini doctor strange That's how I would describe her encore passive and essentially what what it works and how it ha how it happens Is that when she's using her skill dancing sensation which you can see as her third skill right there with a cooldown of 13 seconds and it applies a chill but when she uses that skill, there's a 30% chance that it resets, automatically resets the cooldown for her skill Ardent Performance, which is her first skill. And then, once that, if that trigger happens, then you have 3 seconds to activate Ardent Performance. And then when you activate Ardent Performance, it resets the cooldown for Dark and Light, which is her second skill. So essentially... If you get that trigger to continue happening, that 30% chance, you could trigger 3-2-1, 3-2-1 over and over and over again, granted that the 30% rate when using the skill activates every single time. You can also, uh, if you want to think about it a little bit more uh, in terms of actual game mechanics that exist right now, it's very similar to Rocket Raccoon's second skill. His second skill is called Boom, or yeah, Boom, and uh, it has an effect where as part of Reload, 25% chance when covering fire skill is used, reset the skill cooldown for Boom. So if you're using one of his attacks uh, and 
it happens to trigger, then the, the cooldown on boom will be reduced to zero, and you'll be able to spam the skill over and over and over again. So it's very similar to uh, Rocket Raccoon's ability, except that it applies to three different skills in kind of a chain reaction. So I think that's quite cool, and it will be interesting to see. Nine, none of those skills have a heal on them. Her, her heals are... Uh, relegated to her fourth and fifth skills so it's not too OP in terms of her just gaining all of her life back instantaneously but it may create some really hilarious uh, gameplay uh, reactions and effects if if the auto uh, play for something like Alliance Conquest actually follows these effects and then she just spams skills in a giant loop and then her tier 2 passive just gives her the regular skill damage bonus damage it gives her 40% chance to be immune to fire damage so we're gonna have to see just how much of an impact that makes her uh, against the current meta of the likes of Jean Grey, which is a big part of the current meta. So we can already see that she is being kind of custom tailored. Uh, and it does make th sense thematically for an ice type character to be resistant to fire damage. Besides the logical fact that fire does melt ice. Typically in these kinds of games, ice is resistant to fire. And then of course water is kind of super effective against fire, but that's kind of a Pokemon thing. And then she gets an increase of cold damage 30%, not too much in Moonlight show Snow. And then we have her five skills. We don't know what they're going to do in terms of iframes, animations, AoE, but we do see a four second freeze on Dark and Light, which sounds brutal. And that's on an eight second cooldown, so that's down to four seconds. So if you can freeze your opponent, four seconds, four seconds, they're never gonna get out of being unfrozen. So Dark and Light is an automatic Shadowland winner. You could probably finish a Shadowland stage, uh, the first stage of Shadowland, perhaps at four stars or five stars, if you can just keep spamming Dark and Light over and over again with max skill cooldown and enough damage. That's pretty OP if you ask me. And then her other skills, we have 30% chill damage on Dancing Sensation, so her first three skills just deal damage and have CC effects. Then we get the heals, and although she was referred to as a healer by the uh, script and the interview that we read from the Marvel website a few videos ago when I originally covered the announcement of Luna Snow, she doesn't appear to do any healing to the team, unless these heal effects create some sort of circle or some sort of interactable environment uh, in the, the match, in the arena when you're playing and then you can switch and the effect lingers, these will just be for Luna Snow. But they're pretty powerful. She's a 15% recovery on her fourth skill and that's every eight seconds she can trigger that. And she also has the Entice uh, new crowd control effect for five seconds. So if Entice is like Time Freeze for Doctor Strange, she's definitely going to be super duper OP because four seconds of freeze is a nightmare with Doctor Strange. Five seconds of whatever Entice is, it is possibly much, much worse. That's on a 16 second cooldown, so that's down to eight seconds. So eight out of five out of those eight seconds, you're going to be CC'd. It's pretty brutal. And then Snowflower uh, gives a two second freeze to enemies. So we got a four second freeze plus a two second freeze. That's six seconds plus five seconds of Entice. That's 11 seconds of crowd control on three skills. Yep. And then she gives herself another 15% recovery and then a five second damage immunity. So it's looking like Luna Snow sounds and is designed a lot like Doctor Strange. Not Maybe not as powerful as Doctor Strange. She doesn't have the reset all skills cooldown effect, which would you know, totally break the character and totally broke Doctor Strange. Doesn't have the massive self buffs, all attack, all defense crit rate that Doctor Strange had. And of course, five seconds of immunity is less than seven seconds. But then she also has five seconds of crowd control with whatever Entice is, whereas he only has four seconds with the freeze. The last thing I want to talk about as far as this particular window is concerned is on her leadership has a chance to trigger the character's theme song. I really hope that that will not be the full 54 seconds of her theme song from start to finish because that will basically make the character unplayable uh, with the sound on. I really don't want to hear a 55 second song whenever I play a character. Hopefully the chance to trigger is like 1% or 2% so it becomes kind of a novelty and a meme that just comes up at awkward moments when you're about to kill Odin or you're about to kill Thanos or something. If it's triggered like 50% of the time, she's going to start being used 5% of the time and it's just going to be everyone muting their games and playing with the sound off to avoid hearing tonight every single night. Uh, now aside from this character who seems to be quite powerful uh, from the onset, I do want to discuss 
the disappointing or the the bad news side of things that I covered at the beginning of the video with Luna Snow being a paywall character. Now, traditionally speaking, and in a vacuum, there is nothing wrong with a bio subscription character. I have no problem paying ten dollars to get Carnage to get other powerful characters 2099 is a great character uh, and getting him to tier 2 is fantastic he does a lot of work in the game and his animations are awesome and I do want to support Netmarble when they create good products and good characters like 2099 like other characters potentially like Luna Snow the problem with Luna Snow being a paywall is twofold it's the precedent that they've been setting setting recently with characters going back two updates in a row and it's also the fact that this is their 150th character who will be forever compared to Sharon Rogers, their 75th character that they also had as part of an anniversary event, not anniversary for the Lunar New Year or anniversary for something else, but for Captain America's 75th anniversary. And also because this character is supposed to be a new and budding star in the Marvel comic universe she's being advertised on the website she's being advertised on twitter by bill roseman and danny koo and all these other you know big guys big wigs at marvel so she's being pushed and then you find out that you can play her in marvel future fight but only if you fork over ten dollars or you know potentially if you never got her bios in the first place you might have to fork over even more you might have to get two bio subs back to back that's twenty dollars and that's two months of waiting to slowly get her bios so from a marketing perspective, just purely from an advertiser's perspective, this doesn't make any sense. You've severely limited the accessibility of a character that is supposed to, in a way, revitalize and bring a lot of new players to your game, only for them to find out that they have to fork over money to play with this character? What if they're K-pop fans and they're only coming to this game in the first place to play with Luna Snow? And then they find out they gotta give some green to get the white? To get the snow? I gotta pay? Snow's free, it falls from the sky. Why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Then from a player perspective, it's really a disappointment. And this is where I start to get a little bit less patient with Netmarble. Sharon Rogers was a bio-selector character, and she wasn't even introduced by herself. Sharon Rogers was introduced with Sin who is commonly linked and known as Red Skull's daughter, so it made sense, Captain America's daughter, Captain America's arch nemesis, Red Skull, and his daughter. But both Captain America, Sharon Rogers, and Sin were both bio-selector characters. They're not difficult to obtain and to rank up. And the community, while they didn't really take to Sin because she wasn't powerful, they loved Sharon Rogers. Yes, she was overpowered, but she was everyone's. She was the people's champion. All new players flocked to Sharon Rogers because they she would carry them through the early game rough patches. We can no longer say that about Luna Snow because new players can't even get her past 15 gears tier 1, which means she's never going to reach her maximum potential. She's probably at best for them going to be a 6 or a 6.5 out of 10 as a tier 1 15 gear character. Whereas Sharon Rogers, they could pretty easily get to tier 2 when you factor in Shadowland Biometrics, monthly tier 2 tickets, and Sher Sharon Rogers tier 2 is one of the top 30 best characters in the game. She's a solid 10 out of 10. So it really makes no sense. And then if you go back and you look at the update that brought Sharon Rogers, then you start to lose even more patience. Sharon Rogers wasn't brought in with Captain America's 75th anniversary by herself. As I already stated, she was brought in with Sin. But it wasn't just Sharon Rogers and Sin. There was also three character buffs. They gave the six star skills to Red Skull, Nebula, and MODOK. And then they gave us six new uniforms. And then they actually changed a whole bunch of the UI, the user interface, for things like ISO weight enhancements and quick enhancements, selecting certain ISOs of certain star rankings. They changed a whole bunch of co-op uh, I UI changes to make it easier and faster to do co-op. They introduced the auto repeat for certain stages, including co-op. So I really don't understand how is it possible that Netmarble was able to design Sharon Rogers and introduce her with so much other content about a year and a bit ago and now here we stand Netmarble's a more successful company this game has been going on for longer it it's theoretically has more players now investing more money and this is the best they can do five hours of maintenance for a single character no game mode content 
no changes to existing game modes. Alliance Conquest is still in beta for a year now. In beta for a year. Straight. Battle World is still a joke. And we're supposed to be happy with Luna Snow as a paywall character. That is a really tough sell. And I'm not sure who Netmarble thinks they're selling this to. But I have to say, I don't think there's going to be many people that are happy with this turnout. Maybe the character is going to be fun. Maybe I'll have fun playing with her. But I can't help but feel a bad taste in the back of my mouth when I think about and I compare where we stood a year and a bit ago with Sharon Rogers and where we stand now. And why we had so much then and we have so little now. When you're climbing up a mountain, you're supposed to put more effort as you go higher because it gets harder to climb, but you're closer to the top with every step. And the top is the pinnacle, and that's your goal. As we climb further up the mountain, I find that less effort is being put in, even though we're trying to get to the top. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm a little bit perplexed right now, so I don't have anything else to say. Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care. Hi.